Hey guys, Kill Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. Today we are going to talk about the self sabotaging trader and ask the question Are you one of them? Or rather, uh, what, what we can do if we are one of them. Sorry to kind of put you out there and point blame at you, but if you're one, listen up. Um, this is a video episode, so you guys can see me if you're watching on Spotify or YouTube. Um, and before we move on, congrats on helping us get to episode 1,000. I know it was a little bit ago, but I'm not good with celebrating things, so let's pop a... There's a bottle back there of Cavarcier or something. Let's ooh, pop that probably after I finish recording so that this thing doesn't get sloppy. Um, but I truly appreciate you guys helping me get to a thousand episodes. Keep leaving reviews, keep liking, keep sharing. That is how the podcast grows. A trader just hit me up the other day saying that they randomly Google searched top trading podcast, top Forex podcast, and this one came right up, which is kind of pretty cool, unexpected, but hey, we'll take it. So I appreciate your support and cheers to another thousand episodes, right? So the idea for this uh, episode came from two places. One, we just did the podcast um, a little bit ago, episode 1000. Um, I think it was called Eight Subconscious Behaviors or something like that. And we talked about perfectionism and all the things that you're doing that you don't know you're doing that causes you to struggle. Um, and then two, a little bit of... Uh, internal thought I had the other day. Um, so we've been going through a heat wave here in the US and I like to work out so I can wear tight shirts and show off my muscles. Um, so I went for this bike ride and I was going through this bike ride and I planned on going 30 miles or 35 miles because I, I inch up a little bit each week. Um, but I was feeling good, feeling great. And I ended up going a little bit further than I thought. I was in a shaded area, so I felt good. On my way back, I bonked, right? If you are familiar with bonking or bike riding, bonking is basically when you are overheated, your body runs out of energy, you have nothing left to fuel yourself, and you are just a dead corpse trying to survive home. And I was that dead corpse. I got plenty of pity claps, and you got this from cars that were driving, uh, uh, driving beside me. I may have given them the good job finger, if you know what I'm talking about as well, but during this session where I was thinking about how can I end it all, um, it triggered my inner super stupid competitive keel. Um, and I finished a bike ride. And what I mean by the super stupid competitive keel is that I'm one of those weird crazy athletes where things get dark and everything looks bad. I kind of get this sick smile and I like it. And it made me think about how I like being in positions where I'm supposed to fail. Again, these were the thoughts I, I wanted to like ride my bike off this cliff and just end it. So I'm going back like through all my highlight reels of my life. And I'm like, man, I almost failed at this. And then I persevered. Oh man, I almost failed at that. And then I persevered. Oh man, I had all my money stolen from me. And then I rebounded and persevered. And I discovered that I do really, really good in situations where everyone counts me out and I have to perform kind of back against the wall, do or die. Um, and then it made me think about, man, do I sometimes purposely put myself in those situations to achieve that feeling? Like between me and you, I, I love a more comfortable life, but I feel a lot better when I'm digging myself out of a hole. So I'm like, man, do I purposely do things to sabotage myself so that I can achieve that feeling of digging myself out of a hole and then only to do it again, right? Again, these are, it was overheated. I bonked. I had no energy. These are my last thoughts in life, right? Um, but I wanted to bring this up to you guys because self-sabotage is a real thing. And it is something that a lot of traders, you guys, are doing and you may not even know it. So I guess we can start off by like, what is self-sabotage, right? Self-sabotage is, again, getting in your own way, kind of purposely but unpurposely putting, in yourself, putting yourself in a harder position. And it happens for this reason, right? Or this is one of the reasons it happens, I guess, right? So we like, as human beings, we like setting goals, right? We like thinking in the future and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna have this and I'm gonna have that, right? That triggers all these dopamine, uh, dopamine chemicals to be unleashed in our body and the dopamine is like the, the brain's happy drug, like it makes us excited, ooh, ooh, ooh. So we have this one side of like, we are feeding ourselves stuff that makes us excited and giddy and ready to go. However, when it comes to achieving those goals, 
most of us fear that because we start creating a goal and like, man, in five years, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that, and I'm going to have that. Then when it comes to achieving it, it's like, oh, I got to do that and do that and do that, right? Me and my wife were talking uh, the other day about redoing the backyard. And she's like, what would you, what, what? we actually made it a family thing where we all drew pictures. She's like, I want you guys, uh, me, her, my two kids, I want you guys to draw your dream backyard, right? So we're drawing it out, right? We got like like an hour away from the TV and the tablet and we have, and then we have all these cool things. And I'm like, man, I'm so excited. This is cool, that'd be cool over there. Oh, I didn't think about a lounge out there. That'd be awesome. And then she's like, okay, what do we have to do to make this happen? And I'm like, ah. she's like, let's start by taking off the bricks and, and then relaying them. I'm like, I wanna do it, right? So like we, we get all excited by the dream and then when we realize what goes into making the dream we fear it and that puts us in this state where like we would rather avoid conflict right we have a happy place then we that's flooded with the sad place we'd rather avoid conflict right conflict avoidance and the easiest way to avoid conflict is to not get started so this is what we're doing internally eternally eternally internally to self-sabotage. Now, why does this happen? Well, most of the time, this is due to kind of a, a, a mismatch between our goals and our values. So like when we're really excited about something and we really, really want to do something, there's there's usually no, no stopping us in doing it. But when we are doing something that we have to do, but we don't really want to do it or we don't value doing it, or it's something that we're not passionate about, this is where the disconnect really happened. So from a trading perspective, I, and this is why we always encourage that, if you wanna be a successful trader, you should trade a style that fits your personality, right? Again, I, I told you stories about how I traded styles just for the money, right? They, they didn't fit my trading personality, they didn't fit my trading strengths, but I, I went, I, I wanted to trade them because they were proven to make money, and I'm like, Akil, like, let's just make the money, baby. And then when I started trading them, I struggled a lot because I, I didn't agree with them. And, and I struggled psychologically, mentally, I struggled with doing the work necessary because I didn't really want to do it because I didn't really believe in what I was doing. I didn't notice back then, but this is stuff that I discovered as I grew as a trader. So you see that a lot where it's like, you know, John picks up this strategy that, yeah, John doesn't really like this strategy you're passionate about this strategy, but it makes money. So John's like, I'm gonna trade it. John comes to me and he's like, Kill, I got this strategy. What's my next step? And I'm like, well, okay, John, let's back test a thousand opportunities. And John's like, okay, back testing a thousand opportunities. And John gets to the first hundred. And now he's like, uh, 900 more. I don't really want to do it because he's not really enjoying himself. He doesn't really like the strategy. He's not really passionate about it. So he's not willing to put in the work to get what he needs to actually trade it. You put this with Billy, who loves the strategy, maybe created something of his own and it fits right up his alley. Billy's back testing away, right? A thousand, I can't wait to get to a thousand because he's excited, he's he's passionate about it. It's not a, a it's eh, somewhat of a chore still, but it's not as much as a job. It's, it's a, a labor of love that he's doing. Now, speaking of labor of love, this can have the reverse effect as well, right? In that podcast 1K, we talked about perfectionism and kind of how perfectionism hurts a lot of traders, right? This is another form of self-sabotage. Maybe you are very, very passionate about something, but you're such a perfectionist that you purposely give yourself all these things that need to be in place to sabotage yourself from actually doing what you're supposed to do. We spoke about this in more detail in that episode, so go back and listen to it if you haven't done so already. But the perfectionist certainly has this problem as well. Something else that leads to self-sabotage is lack of communication. And what I mean by lack of communication is that many people are afraid to be social, right? They're not just socially awkward, that's one thing, but they're afraid to be social for other reasons. One, they fear criticism. Right, so if you ask for help, if you ask for opinion, you leave yourself open to be criticized. And if you don't like being criticized, then why would you put yourself in a position where you are basically inviting criticism? Now, again, there's good criticism and bad criticism. There's positive criticism or positive feedback and negative feedback, right? You go on a random trading forum or uh, you know an internet group, whatever like that. 
my guess is that most people or traders on there are going to bash you. They're going to, you say something that's weird. Oh yeah. How do you not know that? You're stupid. Every trader knows this, blah, blah, blah. They're not going to make you feel good. They're going to make you feel worse about yourself. And a lot of people have those experiences, whether it's in trading groups or business meetings or going back to analyze our childhood. Were you in a, were you in a, uh, a study group once as a kid? Did you have a group project and you were the one kid that wasn't as smart as the other kids and they made you feel bad and now you're afraid to express, right? We can go down that rabbit hole, but you don't like criticism, so you don't put yourself in a position to be criticized. Another reason is being outspoken highlights your failures, right? If you are asking for help, and this is something I struggle with a lot. Again, I would rather like, it, it, I am the type of guy that I will drive in the wrong direction for hours before I ask someone for directions. And my wife is like, just ask someone. And I'm like, I'll figure it out. Eventually, I'll get to the ocean, and if I get there, I know I'm going the wrong way, and I'll turn back around. There's only four directions I can go in. I'll get there eventually, um, and then I ask because that's you know you know happy wife, happy life, right? But um, yeah, when we say that we are we need help, it highlights our failures. It highlights that we don't know something, or maybe we're not as knowledgeable about something as someone else. And many prideful people look at that as being a negative. The key with both of those is this. One, put yourself in a position where you can get positive feedback. So put yourself in a community where you are, a community of people that you trust, um, a community of people that trust you, a, a community that is more supportive than kind of like yelly and angry. Two, check your pride at the door. No one cares how smart you are, right? It's funny, we, we, we get those type of people on the platform every once in a while, like the super smart people that are never wrong and they try to just go in and be like, oh, I know this, I know that, blah, blah, blah. No one cares, right? Guess what? We all checked our ego at the door. We are all here because we're trying to get better, right? So it, it's, we know the deal. That's like going to a hospital and then like making fun of people that are sick. Well, guess what? You're in the hospital because you're sick or broken or something, right? We're all here for the same reason. It, it may differ a little bit, but we're all here for the same reason. So put your pride aside and ask yourself, are you more concerned with what people think about you or are you more concerned with getting good? And again, with me and driving, I've gotten a lot better in stores as well as asking at asking associates, hey, where can I find this at? Because as I work on productivity and efficiency and, and time is a, a dwindling asset and all that for, uh, fun stuff, right? I don't wanna spend an hour in a Walmart looking for something when I can just ask someone or use an app uh, and find it within five minutes. So check your pride, check your ego at the door. Don't be afraid to communicate. Now, going back to the self-sabotage, whether it's perfectionism, whether it's lack of communication, there's a million others as well, but I don't wanna make this another 30 minute podcast. The problem that happens is that the more that we self-sabotage and the more that we give in to these thoughts that are making up excuses for why we shouldn't do something or why we can't do something, the more we do that, that becomes more and more of our regular life, right? I, I just uh, watched this movie the other day on Netflix. It was like this Hitman type movie. I can't remember the, uh, the name. <laughs> I think the name was Hitman actually. Um, but it was basically this teacher who was, I think uh, a psychology teacher maybe, who was working for the cops or whatever. And he was supposed to, um, he was supposed to pretend to be a hitman so that he can like catch people putting out hits on people and then they arrest him. And one of the guys that I was talking to, he has no like cop training. The guy was like, you gotta, you gotta be careful. Or no, it was the ex-wife was saying that, you know, new studies opened up and said that, you know, if you, you know, fake it till you make it type of deal where if you pretend to be something for so long, it actually tricks the mind into believing that is the actual you. So you can rewire yourself. You're not built into who you are once your brain stopped developing at whatever age, you can rewire those neural pathways, which is something I, I completely believe in. So long story short, this guy had like, you know, big, ner you know, nerdy little, uh, you know, professor, but then like he got to be all these different people when he was pre pretending to be a hitman. And then he kind of became that person it was no longer this person anymore because he convinced himself of that so this is the same thing with the self-sabotage right 
if we are convincing ourselves that we can't do something or we shouldn't do something or we keep pushing back something, right, we are eventually going to become that person that is not good enough. And, and, and we are going to have zero motivation to do something. We are going to have zero self-esteem. Um, and we're just going to be surrounded by failure. And we're, we're going to become an excuse machine. Every time something needs to be done, we're going to have an excuse. We're going to have an excuse. We're going to have an excuse because that's what is the new norm for us. And that's why you see these kind of uh, these people that constantly procrastinate is because that is just now who they are. So how do we fight these self-sabotaging behaviors? Right. There's a lot of techniques out there. Here's one that I personally like. Create a sentence. Right. We do the same thing in trading and I'll, I'll kind of get to that in a little bit. But I want you to create a sentence. Right. I want you to create a sentence with both your goal and your behavior. So it's going to be like, I want to achieve financial freedom by 2030, but I keep overspending credit card or whatever it, it may be. But, you know, write a sentence and insert your goal. I want to insert goal, but I keep and then insert the action. And just by doing that, guess what you will discover? You will discover what action you are taking that leads to your self-sabotage. It's right there. Again, trading, we, we do the same thing with psychological mistakes, right? A big part of trading is the psychological mistake. The trading plan is, is good. The numbers are right, but you get into the market and you F it up, right? Because you just can't, you get scared, you get greedy, all this fun stuff. And we say, right, judge process over outcome are you taking good trades bad trades good trades are trades where you follow the rules 100 percent. bad trades are ones where you break the rules so in the little note section at the end of your trading journal you should write you know how you feel this and that and that but if you make a mistake write down that mistake this is the same tactic i did to eliminate my mistakes right you guys remember the story about how i was making like 30 mistakes a month and i said i'm just going to make one less mistake each month and then try not to make the same mistake twice and then slowly but surely as i eliminated those mistakes nothing changed my trading right as i eliminated those mistakes my pnl went from to right up there um same exact tactic that was a form of self-sabotage so write down you know i want to uh, i want to execute a good trade but i keep taking profits early because I was afraid of news, right? Something like that. And now that you know what you're doing, your self-sabotaging behavior, now you know what to lock into and attack. Now the next step, actually creating a plan to attack it. And this is gonna be specific to whatever your behavior is, so I can't go into that too much, but it starts with something that we spoke about earlier. You have to communicate. Chances are you need help. Chances are you probably don't know or don't want to know how to solve this problem, so you need to communicate. You need to tell your wife, you need to tell your husband, you need to tell your trading community, you need to tell your trading coach, this is what I'm doing, it's messing me up, how can I go about fixing it? And once you do that, again, once you get past that fear of being judged and then exploiting your failures, right? you're gonna be in a position where you can actually have a tactic that you can use to solve the problem that is stopping you from getting what you want. Boom. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you have any tactics that you use to help with self-sabotage, share it, right? Don't hog it, that's selfish. Put it in the comment section below on Spotify or here on YouTube if you're watching. I will read it. You guys go down to that section and read it as well. And maybe there's a better tactic or an alternative tactic that I didn't mention that you can use to get yourself on the better track. Once again, I appreciate you guys making this the most awesome podcast in the world. Until next time, plan to trade your plan. Take care.